What a busy few weeks it has been. Uh, I got back from Yellowstone a little bit ago, uh, spent a few days there. Um, I posted a video on that. Check it out if you haven't already. I saw some awesome wildlife on that trip. Such an amazing trip. A lot of the animals I saw were very expected. Uh, a lot of them were not. So uh, if you haven't checked that video out yet, do so. Um, I, I think you'll enjoy it. What an awesome trip that was, so much fun. Uh, after I got back from that trip, I jumped right into some other projects that uh, I've been working on, uh, some other videos that I'm working on, and uh, I've started getting some footage on those. I'll put a couple little uh, clips of some of that footage at the end of this video, so uh, check that out, let me know what you think. Uh, I've seen some, some fun animals the last little bit, and uh, I've gotten some some fun clips of those those guys, but uh, uh, right now I'm actually with a uh, great horned owl. He's just sleeping right now, but um, the wind's starting to pick up a little bit, so that that might wake him up. I don't know, um, but I just thought I would take a little break, take a minute to uh, talk about some of the things that go through my head whenever I take a picture of an animal. Uh, wildlife photography can be uh, really tricky. There's a lot of things to remember, uh, but I yeah I just wanted to take take a minute to talk about some of the things that that I think about every time I take a picture or before I take a picture uh, when I kind of have a goal of a picture. These are just some of the things that I that I think about. To preface this video, these are not uh, do's and don'ts of wildlife photography. These are not the rules of wildlife photography. Uh, these are just extremely simple things that I think about when going out to get a picture, things that I think uh, can make an image a little bit more interesting. Uh, just things that, that I think about when I set a goal of a picture that I want to, that I want to take. Um, so with that, let's just jump right in and uh, talk about a couple of these, these items. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is your image background. This is something for, it's embarrassing, but for years of getting into wildlife photography, I was so focused on the animal that I was taking a picture of that I forgot to look at the background and to really, you know, analyze what terrain I had to work with in the background. Uh, this is something for a while now that I've really tried to think about before I even take any of the pictures, I always look at the background and position myself in the best place to be able to get a background that I'm happy with. It's not always possible. Sometimes you're just going to have some, you know, cluttered backgrounds or, you know, a background that you're not happy with. Sometimes there is no angle to, uh, you know, get some perfect background, but you you work with what you've got and you you do the best with what you've got. So uh, just an example of this, lately, uh, or recently I was out with some bighorn sheep just taking some pictures and I got a very similar picture uh, of some sheep and there were two different rams kind of going after some females and I took a picture of one of the rams and the background, um, I'll, I'll put these images up, there's two images, the background on that first image um, wasn't a lot going on um, as far as uh, like contrast goes or anything like that. Uh, it was just kind of a pretty flat, jumbled background. And then I looked over, there was another ram, I could have gotten a similar background on him, but instead I moved over literally like 10 feet and all of a sudden I had this blue snowy mountain in the background. Uh, so I was able to get a picture of him. Again, these images are very similar. They're both images of a uh, bighorn sheep ram chasing a female basically. But because I moved 10 feet, uh, I analyzed the background and I moved 10 feet. The images, uh, you know, are pretty different. I mean, they're similar, but they're different. Um, so that's something that you want to think about whenever you take an image, or again, even before you take an image. Uh, just look at the background, see what you have to work with, 
and uh, get the best angle to, to work with for that background and it, it can really do a lot for an image. Um, also with the background, anytime you can add some nice colors in, um, you know, things like that. Your, your lighting can be a big thing anytime you can get like uh, the golden hour light on your subject in the background. You know, th there's so many things that you can do for your background. That's just something you want to think about uh, whenever you take an image is that that background, uh, what angle you're at in relation to your subject and the background. Uh, and that kind of leads me into the next point is your angle of view for a subject, uh, where you're at in relation to that subject. Again, this these items that I'm going through, these are not do's and don'ts of photography, so just because it's something that I think about, please don't take it that I'm saying, don't do this, or you have to do this. No, not at all. These are just things that go through my head, things that I like to look for, uh, or, you know, consider before or while I'm taking an image. So, again, next item that I want to go into is your uh, angle of view in relation to your, your subject. Uh, recently, like I had mentioned, I was in Yellowstone and it was interesting, you know, driving those roads. A lot of those roads um, are up a lot higher than the ground around them. Uh, it's a road and then you've kind of got some hills that go down and a lot of times you get bison or elk or something, you know, down below the roads. And when I first started going to Yellowstone, you know, I'd be driving the roads and I'd see a bison down below and I'd stop and I'd take a picture. Uh, pointed, you know, down, and, uh, you know, you just keep going. Or today, you know, I'm with this great horned owl, and it's up high in a tree, so I'm pointed up uh, at the tree. And that's what I'm getting into, is your angle of view in relation to the subject. Uh, so, for me personally, what I like most, and what I try to achieve the majority of the time, is I want to be on eye level with whatever animal it is that I'm photographing. Obviously, you know, with a great horned owl in a tree, that's probably not gonna be possible. Um, but, you know, with these bison in Yellowstone that are down off the road, that is possible. Uh, instead of just pulling up in your car and shooting down, how about you pull, you know, pull out and go down with them, uh, you know, keeping your distance, of course, but get on their eye level. And those images, in my opinion, can be uh, a lot more captivating. I, I love being on or just below the animal's eye level. Uh, it makes them look a lot bigger in your picture, and uh, it, it just makes the picture, in my mind, a lot more intimate anytime you can get on that eye level uh, or, or just below. A lot of the bear pictures that I take in Alaska, that's something I really try with those pictures. Uh, just, again, I feel like it makes the image a lot more intimate anytime you can get on that eye level with them and uh, get your image then. It's, it, it can do a lot in a picture, in, in my opinion. So that's another thing that I, that I think about. Uh, not, another item that I think is v very important to uh, think about is what you're trying to capture as far as uh, your subject goes, whether it's a portrait or if you want them actively doing something, an action shot. Uh, a lot of my images that I've taken, especially the first uh, you know, few years that I was getting into wildlife photography, uh, as I go back and look at those pictures, I notice that a lot of them are portrait pictures. And that's something that at that time that's something I really gravitated towards was a good, you know, portrait of, of an animal, you know, looking off to the side or looking at the camera. Um, that's a whole different discussion, but, uh, you know, I really gravitated towards these, these portrait images. Whereas now, I'm really tr going after the, the action images. That's something that kind of switched in my mind, and I still love a good portrait. I got tons of portrait images on my recent trip in Yellowstone and uh, I still love a great portrait but uh, you know I, I'm really gravitating towards more of the action shot now and action doesn't necessarily need to be you know an animal running or bears fighting or um, you know something like that uh, action in 
in my definition that I'm using it now can be something as simple as water dripping from, you know, a bear's face or a paw raised as something's walking or, you know, some sort of animal on a cold morning with breath coming out of its mouth. Uh, just some sort of movement in that image that you're, you're capturing. Um, some sort of action in, in that regard is what I'm referring to. And so whenever I, I see an image, or whenever I see an animal, that's something I try to think about is, okay, what am I gonna capture here? Do I just want the portrait? Or uh, what kind of action is available for me to use? Uh, what, you know, what can I get as far as that goes? Uh, so that's something that I really try to think about as well is, um, y you know, trying to get some sort of movement in that image. Again, not necessarily the animal, um, but like I said, breath coming out of its mouth or water dripping, you know, something like that. Um, just some sort of uh, movement in that picture. And I think that that also can do a lot for a picture. Um, and so that's something that I, I try to think about um, and decide before I take a picture. Something else that I want to talk about is uh, how zoomed in or zoomed out you are to your subject, how close or how far away you are to it. And this, uh, this is something that sounds so simple. And a lot of wildlife photographers, uh, they try to get as close as they can to that animal. They want extreme detail, you know, in the eye and the fur, the feathers, whatever it is. And, you know, I've got my fair share of extremely close-up pictures. I love an awesome, you know, great detailed close-up picture. I think they look amazing. Uh, but you've also got the other approach too, to, you know, zoom out a little bit, try to get some of the landscape that that animal lives in included into that image. You know, when I see an animal, I, again, when I'm looking at the background, when I'm thinking about that, I look at what I've got to work with and at the same time, I'll think about, okay, you know, this background looks really cool. I'm gonna zoom out on this one to, to be able to see more of the background in the image. Uh, so that's something that you wanna think about as well, is just how close you're gonna to get to that subject. Again, I love an awesome close-up shot, but uh, sometimes I think, you know, depending on what you've got to work with in the landscape, you can create some phenomenal images when your subject is just a little dot in the picture and you've got this awesome landscape to work with. Uh, an example of this recently, or somewhat recently, was uh, this last year when I was in Alaska. I was out on the tundra photographing some, tar some ptarmigan and they were all around me so I was able to get really close to them and I've got these zoomed in pictures, uh, images of them, you know, extremely detailed, just very close but uh, they started to move off to my right a little bit. And so as I shifted right, I noticed this phenomenal background. I had this river below, some you know hills in the tundra, uh, some fireweed, beautiful flowers coming up, uh, these moody clouds behind. And as soon as I saw that, I, just in my mind, I could see the image unfolding and I knew that I had to get my big lens off my camera. I had to get my landscape lens on. So I hurriedly, you know, switched those out and was able to get this more uh, landscapey type feel image uh, with these ptarmigan and the birds, you know, they're just very small in the image, but that's what I was trying to achieve and I think it turned out really nicely in my opinion. Uh, so that's something that you want to think about uh, as well as, you know, how close do I want to be to the subject? How, how close do I want them in the image? Um, and that's, uh, that, that can play a big role. That does play a big role in uh, every picture you take, really. Uh, the main thing with these points, again, there's no do's or don'ts, there's no rights or wrongs. These are just things that you want to think about when you're taking a picture. Don't just go out, see an animal, and just start, you know, clicking away. Just look at the animal, look what you have to work with, and, you know, really analyze the situation that you're in and do the best with what you've got. Try different things, try some of each. You know, get your portrait shot and then try to get some action. 
uh, get your zoomed out approach and then a zoomed in approach, you know. Um, but I think the important part is actually just thinking about what you're doing. Um, don't just go on autopilot and and uh, do what you're used to. Step out of your comfort zone a little bit. Try something new. And a lot of those images can be just phenomenal images if you're uh, just trying new things. You're going to have all of these aspects that they're all going to be in your picture. Make sure you've thought about it before you take it and make the most of it is what I'm getting at. Let me know what uh, you think about anytime you go out and take pictures. Like I'd mentioned, these are things that I never really considered or thought about when I first started and I wish I had because I, I had some pretty cool scenarios and I could have made some awesome Im images, but I just wasn't thinking. So uh, I'd love to hear what you think about whenever you go out with your camera. Uh, the things that you consider whenever you take a picture, make an image. Uh, I would love to learn from you and uh, really just hear the things that uh, go through your brain when you get out with your camera. Let me know in the comments uh, and others who go through the comments and read, it's going to be good for them as well. Again, these are no secrets or anything. These are just uh, simple things that we as photographers should be, should be thinking about when we go out with our camera, so I'd love to hear it. Like I would mentioned before, I'll post some clips, uh, just some short little clips of some of the animals that I've been able to see for some of the videos that I'm currently working on, and uh, I hope you enjoy those. My list of videos I'm working on has expanded as uh, some of you guys have left comments of, hey, I'd like to see this, or um, tell me more about this, can you do a video on this? So uh, I add those, each one of those comments that I get, I add them to my list and I start thinking now about how uh, can I, you know, get a good video to answer your questions or uh, show you something that you want to see. So as always, let me know what you want to see going forward and I'll add them onto that list and start working them uh, now, start thinking about them now and hopefully get some fun videos for you uh, in the future. But. Uh, uh, I'm going to go now and hopefully hopefully this owl will wake up and we'll get some stuff of him. Appreciate the support and we'll see you next week. Yeah, it's pheasants behind me.